the best beer in America. Sam Adams, the Boston beer, won the title four times in the Great American Beer Festival. But before it reached the lips of Americans, it passed the discerning taste buds and strict beer laws of Germany. We were actually in Munich before we were in Rhode Island. With barely 30 years of beer making, Samuel Adams is a baby among brewers. Today, its bevy of beers garners more international awards than any other brewery of its size. I feel like the Willy Wonka of beers. I get to do cool new beers every day. What could be better than that? Virtually pioneering a craft beer revolution with its big, bold flavors, Sam Adams forged a new path for American brew. Today, I think the most exciting place in the world to be a brewer is the United States. Beer has been around for centuries. Small batches handcrafted using simple methods were enough to meet the needs of the small communities most people lived in. Human beings settled down to live in villages and grow grain. And what did they do with the grain? They made beer. Jim Cook didn't grow his own grain, but in 1984, he did give up his corporate career to turn the world of beer making in America upside down. He started making beer using those traditional brewing practices. Before we started making big, flavorful beers, everybody thought that beer was basically cold and fizzy and in a can. Digging up his grandfather's beer recipe from before Prohibition, the first batch was made in Jim's kitchen. Now, the brewery is constantly experimenting with new beers. This is where we perfect our recipes. This is where we try new ingredients and new brewing processes. The new brews are unique in the nuances, but the main ingredients are pretty simple. There's four basic ingredients in beer, water, yeast, malt, and hops. Malt is cereal grain, usually a barley, that has been germinated and roasted to the desired color. We're gonna take the malted barley and we're gonna put that through our mill. We wanna grind that down to a really fine grist. Over 700 pounds of malted barley is poured into a hopper and then run through a mill. We're then gonna take that grist and we're gonna bring it into our brew house. We wanna combine that with water and that's called mashing in. The mashing in will release the barley's starches and sugars. The process takes 20 minutes. Temperatures vary depending on what they're making. Every recipe is different. It's like making a sauce. So you use different temperatures, different amounts of grain, different types of grains. After mashing in, the mix is strained, separating liquid from solid. The liquid is a sugary solution that's called wort. And there's no alcohol in it yet. The solid is the spent grain. The grain then becomes feed for livestock. We have a local dairy herder that comes by and picks it up every week. The wort is pumped into a brew kettle where it's brought to a boil. And then we'll take that liquid now, the wort that we brought back into the brew kettle, and we're gonna add our hops. Hops are flowers from a perennial vine. They add the bitter, tangy taste to beer and help to stabilize it. The best hop growing area in the world is still where hops originated in Bavaria. For my money, they're the best hop in the world. They're really, really, really nice, aromatic, citrus, piney, resinous, grapefruit. The wort and hops are heated to condense the liquid. Then the concoction is cooled before it goes to the fermenter, where yeast is added. If we pitched yeast into it right now, the yeast would die. So we have to chill it down to the right temperature. As a brewer, I don't really make beer. I make yeast food, and then the yeast takes that food and turns it into beer by consuming the sugars. The yeast's reaction to the sugar starts off slowly, but when it gets going, it looks like a rapid boil, when in fact, it's the cooled yeast gorging itself on sugar. The yeast is gonna convert all that sugar into carbon dioxide and alcohol. Fun and bubbles, as a certain friend of mine likes to say. While the yeast finishes its feast, the beer will sit in the fermentation tanks for up to two weeks, depending on the brew. Tasting is the test for readiness. Tastes wonderful, yeah, nice and hoppy. It's a little young yet. The size and number of these tanks show you how far Jim Cook has come since he started brewing beer nearly 30 years ago. I had to walk the streets with beer in my briefcase, trying to get people to taste it and maybe, just maybe, put it in their bar. 
With beer in his blood and a Harvard business degree, Jim turned Sam Adams into one of the largest American-owned beer companies. It was in my family, it was in my blood, about 0.06, so it's entirely legal. Today, Boston Lager is only one of 30-plus distinctive styles of beers the brewery produces. I want to create new beers. I want to break with tradition. I want to build on it. I want to innovate. It's after the fermentation tank where some of Jim's innovations unfold in the form of new flavors. An example is the American Creek, which features cherries. The cherries that we're using actually have a much darker fruit character, more towards a fig. In this tank is the creek, um, while it's aging and it's sitting um, on a bed of cherries right now. So it's a specifically designed tank. Basically up to here is solid cherries. After fermentation and aging, the beer is poured into kegs and sent out to the bars of the world. We're basically just filling kegs, filling half hour kegs. Samuel Adams brews hundreds of batches of beer every year, and they're all tested by Jim Cook, the ultimate quality control. The flavor structure of beer is the balance between the body and sweetness of the malt and the spiciness and bitterness of the hops. And a great beer will showcase each of those elements in about a three or four second kind of parade across your palate. 